what a decade this week has been. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is one of those I I, I cannot wait because we've we've done week by week. I, I want this this show might actually have a place in history because we have documented what's been going on week by week during the Trump presidency. And this week was one of the the exceptional moments when the the president's tax returns were released and not by his own. And we we've come to find out many things. Um, like the we all pay more for ninth. taxes in this piece of ninth. Uh, out for ten of the last fifteen years, he has paid zero dollars in taxes. For two of those years, while he was president, he paid a grand total of seven hundred and fifty dollars. And already, like people are like, well, it's just you know, he's just really smart. Actually, no. He was terrible at what he did. That's yeah. because uh, the tax records also show he has lost so much money. And yeah. he has $400 million in debt that's coming due during what would be his second term in office. To we don't know who. We're not entirely. Yeah, we don't know who. We don't, we don't know who. We don't know. He also has in total $1.1 billion in debt. I'm going to say that again. $1.1 billion. If and if and when Trump does default on this debt, which it looks like he will because he doesn't have the liquidity to pay for it, he will be his own economic crash. Yeah. That will be $1.1 billion in debt. Gone. Defaulted on. Just like that. And that's why he's so desperate to stay in office. Oh, and also, yeah, the the because the, uh, they the, can't put you in tax in prison for tax evasion when you're president and fraud. They, I mean, nothing says they can't, hmm. but they've decided they won't because it would be rude and tax fraud. That's uh, yeah. because he's been writing off things as business expenses that he shouldn't, like, like seventy seventy thousand dollars on his hair. He wrote off seventy thousand dollars for his hair as and a listen, business I told you expense. You were never a fan of Gawker, but they they had that nine years ago. I remember that they did a deep dive on his hair and the reason it cost so much. They had the figure at sixty thousand, mm. but he literally has some oh, la, la. doctor who literally like sews his hair together. <laughs> And, and even more, um, like you were just mentioning about his daughter, his daughter is an executive at the Trump Organization. Whatever the f*** that is, because there's a whole bunch of shell companies, they're trying to figure that one I out. I mean, what's her job now? She's a senior advisor. Well, she's an executive at the Trump Organization, and they have about $700,000 written to consulting fees yeah. that match a similar report on Ivanka's income so you can't do that if someone works for you you can't write off consulting fees because they're an employee right so you can't that that's tax fraud oops a doodle and he's under the audit he's under is to he's under potentially a hundred million dollars in um taxes because he claimed a 74 74 million dollar tax rebate he got 74 million dollars from the government and the irs audit says um no you shouldn't it doesn't seem right they want that money back plus interest and penalties yeah like we paid more than 750 dollars in taxes last year i did but and, uh, I we paid. Don't, we Sarah do not paid. Live in a gold plated tower. No. No. And 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 just the the best the tip of the iceberg here is, the New York Times, which broke this story, has said, this is just the beginning. 
they have more. And the debates are tomorrow. <laughs> My favorite part is how he will simultaneously say he's the best businessman that ever lived. Suck it, Carnegie. And then at the same time, we'll say, well, man, I can't pay any taxes. All of my properties are losing money. That's another element of potential uh, fraud. Um, loan, because on his loan applications, he said all of his businesses make money. Right. But on his taxes, he said they all lose money. But like, if you're the best businessman in the history of the Nine. world, why are all your businesses losing money? I'm confident that neither of those things are true, but both of them definitely can't be true at the same time. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be buckle up. This is going to be an October to remember. They call the thing it is I'm still not even convinced that that will be enough to keep him from getting reelected. I'm not either. Cause CNN did a bit where they interviewed people in a food a diner. Nine. The diners, and okay? Ooh, la, la. Nine. Interviewing old white people in diners. The first guy was like, well, you know, nobody's perfect. I, I give a shit about old white people in fucking diners. And the second guy was like, I think it's great. Shouldn't we all want to pay less taxes? He's obviously a genius. We we, we need to just barricade all, all Midwest diners. We would solve so many problems. <laughs> just Just lock them up. Lock them out. Shut them down. No more Midwest diners. Nine. Mid no, no. Tired of fuck. How many Midwest diners are there? God damn it! I hate Midwest <laughs> diners. But I, I like diners. Well, we've destroyed them. They, we've Nine. ruined them, Tara. They pancakes. Diners are over. All right. Now well, enough. Check that. Now let's go on to even more stupid shit because we have. By the way, YouTube wants you to know fervently that platypi are not marsupials. I'm not even kidding, there's so many comments. I don't remember what they actually are, but they're not marsupials. And it's very upsetting that you said that. I could have sworn. I was an art major, man, I don't fucking know. I fucking... I could have... Monotrims, monotremes. Okay, this we we were. I was taught my entire fucking life that fucking platypi were fucking marsupials. Fucking 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 public school. <laughs> fucking Australia. Fucking America. I Just do. Thought you should know. Look, folks, I was born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. You're lucky I can say words coherently. <laughs> words that are not the Pledge of Allegiance. I have read more than one book. I can I can manage basic addition and subtraction. Y'all are fucking lucky, okay? Just, just passing along the wisdom. <laughs> I'll pass along some fucking fuck off. Fucking fuck. No, I tell you, you guys, you guys don't even know. All right, just, just, and for people out there, like, what's South Carolina? For most of my life, the Confederate flag was all the fuck all over this place. We only just in the last decade took the Confederate flag down from the state house it was flying alongside the state flag okay we passed a truck last week that had a giant confederate flag hanging off of it in colorado, in colorado. they call colorado the centennial state because it became a state in 1876 11 full years after the civil war are you lost you should go back to wherever you think you are. So yeah, it's it's y'all are lucky, man. I'm I am amazed I am not just another gibbering shithead, because there are quite a few of them. Nash needs to bring back Arlo. See the thing is, I'm not sure people would understand the satire. People might just think Arlo's a real guy. 
Yeah, I mean, look at the fucking president right now. We, people are kind of... Uh, satire's dead. <laughs> Irony's dead. All right. <clears throat> With that having been said, let's finally get to the bit here. People are waiting. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all kinds of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And, uh, oh, people are pointing out our show is older than the Confederacy. Woo! Uh, we left it. Your show has lasted three times as long as the Confederacy. Suck it, Confederacy! All right. And now, you remember last week, uh, the woman who was pulled over and claimed that the reason she was all, she said she needed to poop. They couldn't arrest her because it was her birthday and she had to poop. Apparently, this is a this is not an unusual fucking thing. Mm. Bring this over here. Uh, Yakima Police Department drug bust after vice chase suspect saying, "I just need to poop." A Yakima man is under arrest and facing a dozen serious drug and identity theft charges after what began with a bicycle missing a light. We said Saturday evening, an officer noticed a man riding his bike south on 10th Avenue without a light on his bicycle. The officer saying he decided to stop the man to talk to him about the importance of having a light on his bicycle on a dark roadway. After the officer turned on his emergency lights, uh, the man didn't pull over and instead tried to get away, making multiple turns and pedaling the bike extremely fast. The cop was in a car, right? Yep. And he, he's trying to pull like, you know, the super bike running yeah what did you think you were gonna get away at the 1700 block of pleasant avenue police say the man ditched the bicycle threw a backpack on the ground and began running down a driveway Police say the man tripped while trying to jump a three-foot fence the officer yelled he'd use a taser on him if he kept running at that point the man put his hands up exclaiming i just need to poop 38-year-old Samuel C. Riojas, I think that Riojas? Riojas. Riojas uh, was arrested. In searching Riojas and the bag that he said they tossed away, police found three different cell phones, brass knuckles, a pill cutter, $240 in counterfeit currency marked prop only, well over 100 blue oxycodone pistols, uh, pistols, pills, laced with fentanyl, Nine suboxone. I don't even know what suboxone. 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 What the hell is that? Nine suboxone strips, two pipes, a scale, numerous knives, some suspicious checks, and a partridge in a pear tree. Pear tree. <laughs> Police said they also discovered Riojas has felony warrants for a DOC eva violation, um, possession of heroin, and identity theft. All because this motherfucker didn't have a reflector on a light on his fucking bike. For one thing, what are you doing tr going around with this mobile fucking pharmacy? Well, here's my question. With that many opioids on you, you do not have to poop. <laughs> I guess that's more of a comment than a question. But if you have a backpack full of opioids, you haven't pooped in weeks. <laughs> I don't believe you. Did they find the stuff? They found it on him, in his backpack. They did not find it in him. That's that's a different story. We have those sometimes. Um, Suboxone is used to treat opiate addiction. So is he running like a bootleg rehab? <laughs> That's that is terrible because he's selling them and, and then he's he trying. That's addictive as well. Because my mm. mom used to work in a methadone clinic, yeah. and people would get addicted to the methadone because it's designed to wean you off heroin. So maybe that's also addictive. I don't know. I I just but, so all of this. Why are you carrying this on a bike? <laughs> you've got this much drugs you could get a car if you have this much drugs and you can't afford a car you're bad at drug dealing he's the greenest drug dealer I know right save the planet and all that shit save the planet yeah but like fossil fuels man 
Fentanyl is no fucking joke I'm either. Sure to kill the planet, just like some of my friends. Fentanyl is. <laughs> it was, yeah. Fentanyl is no fucking joke. That's some fucked up shit. That's that. Uh, yeah, fentanyl. That's that synthetic <laughs> opioid that's like yeah. way more powerful. Like a magnitude more fucking powerful than heroin. Yeah. That's one of those things that humanity kind of wishes we could uninvent. Yeah, along with edible panties. Um. <laughs> right up there with the nuke. I'm t- you know, if it, it would, that was one of the first things that pops into my head. I'm not real fat, <laughs> not real big fan on nuclear bombs. <laughs> I heard Oppenheimer was very upset about that as well. <laughs> But just, dude, a white, a bike. All I had to do was keep a light. You know what? If you're going to do drugs, you've got to take some preventative steps not to get busted. You have to be inconspicuous. I, yeah. And trying to run away saying, I just have to poop. And the thing is, like, if the cop just wanted to tell you to put a light on your bike and you manage not to act suspicious as fuck, he probably would not have looked in your backpack anyway. No shit. Well... I mean, who knows? This sounds like not a white name, so. Also, when the, when the, when the the cop is chasing you down and you say, "I need to poop," they're they're not going to go. Oh, okay, my bad. I'm sorry. Go on. Take care. They Have a good night. Will stop them from tasing you for being honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That is true. Uh, well, next up, it's I I we had we haven't had many of these lately because you know well everything's been shut down. But things have started back up again. Actually, no, this is from last... Th- th- he did this last year. But uh, this is when uh, he- he's been arrested for it. Um, fucking this fucking... Former St. Thomas student pleads guilty to making fake bomb threat. And the headline is misleading. Well, I'll show you in a second. Former University of St. Thomas student has pled guilty to pleaded to making a fake bomb threat at the university. The U.S. Attorney's Office said 21-year-old Ray Gansham Persaud uh, entered the plea Tuesday morning. According to court documents, Persaud called the university's main switchboard and falsely stated there was a bomb on the St. Paul campus on three separate occasions. April 17th, 2019, uh, August 20th, 2019, and September 17th, 2019. Persaud admitted that on the dates he called in the threats... He failed to complete his homework and wasn't prepared for class. You know, we've covered a lot of these. Oh, yeah. And we've covered, you're fucking up everybody's day, you're scaring everybody, blah, blah, blah. All the obvious stuff. Yep. The other part that pisses me off is nobody does their homework in college. I mean, not always anyway. Like, I was a goody do- goody and I mostly did my homework, but like, yeah, I did too. Learning how to bullshit your way through not having done an assignment <laughs> is part of college. <laughs> that's how you're learning to exist in the world. It's true. That's not the academia, that's the fucking life skills. I just, well, okay, I guess this would kind of count as bullshit, except, you know, it's a felony. Yeah. But like learning how to pretend you read a book you did not read, part of college. I had a box full of Cliff Notes, baby. I had a box of them. Under just by the time I was done, I had like this many fucking Cliffs. I graduated too. Um, no, just it. This what the? But you know, you could just commit a felony and call in a terrorist threat instead. I'm sure the consequences won't be nearly as bad of those of not doing your homework. Oh, man, I didn't do my... T- and that's my- like, you gotta think long-term, man. Like, what are the consequences of not doing your homework versus the consequences of being a fucking terrorist? Right? You know, they... they, 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 they he had to plead guilty to this, too, because they fucking had him because he wasn't subtle. They can trace your ass. I I just 
homework. Oh man, I overslept and I didn't do my homework. Time to call in another bomb threat. Also, that's a trick that only ha that only works once. Yeah. Like three times in one semester? Well, no, it doesn't only work once because they have to. Every time it comes in, they have to treat it like a legitimate threat yeah. because we we fucking ruined every fucking thing. I guess the way I should put it is every time you do this, you exponentially increase your chances of getting caught. Yeah. <sighs> well, we we are uh, we got we have an I think a new segment is brewing. Um, uh, we. We, we seem to be getting a lot of these lately um, from the uh, Department of All Cops or Bastards. Um, Philadelphia cop went on $5,500 tire slashing tirade after being denied booze at a restaurant. And they got his ass on tape, too. Off-duty cop accused of slashing tires on the very streets he patrols is finally facing charges this week after being caught on video during the incident. Uh, Pittston police officer Dion Fernandez was charged with felony criminal mischief for allegedly causing $5,543.21 in damages in the tire slashing tirade on Main Street. According to state police arrest affidavit, Fernandez lashed out after being denied alcohol at a downtown restaurant. I. I do. Okay. All right. Let's 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 break this one down. You're mad that you don't get alcohol at a restaurant. Okay. So you go outside and slash up a street full of tires. How? What is? How does one? Can it? Yeah, does, how does that punishment fit the crime? How does that fix me? How did... What? Also, again, we need to consider consequences. Consequences of not being given a fucking Manhattan with dinner. You don't have a fucking Manhattan with dinner. Consequences of slashing everybody's tires on the block. Jail. And you're on video. I mean, I'm probably not, because he's a cop. So they'll probably let him off with... A fucking fine, but like, still, you wouldn't have to pay that fine it's, if you just had a fucking ginger ale, like a person. I mean, just ugh. oh, he has been on paid leave ever since, according to the mayor. Consequences are for civilians. So this dude goes out, ruins. Five thousand. How many? How many tires is five thousand dollars? I don't even know. Restaurants do restaurants have ginger ale? If they have a bar, they do because drinks, alcoholic drinks, a lot of them have ginger ale, so they should. Otherwise, don't order a Moscow Mule from them. Wait, that's ginger beer. Whatever. I, I, yeah. Just I, how many tires is five thousand dollars? Because that's how many people's days he just fucked up. It seems like a lot. It does. But I don't remember how much it cost last time I got my tires replaced. My last four tires cost about seven hundred dollars. So okay, so that's a lot. If he only did it on one side, that's about twenty cars. That's about twenty fucking cars. If you do it like, on both who, sides, it's about 10 cars, but... Who are you trying to teach a lesson here, man? This is the kind of guy that you just know. Like, every wall in his house has a hole in it from his fucking fist. Right? Every room has either a hole or a spot of speckle that hasn't been painted to match. And this is a dude who gets to decide if you're breaking the law. Yeah. Good luck, Pittsburgh. Or no, Philadelphia, <laughs> Pittston. Sorry. Well, good luck, Pittston. Savages, anyway. <laughs> Unfortunately, this next one is uh, this is one of your countrymen, Sarah. I'm sorry. Um, I guess this one comes from the department of we can't take you anywhere. Um, 
An Irish tourist in Rome defaced the Colosseum by carving his initials into the walls of the ancient structure. Private security at Rome Colosseum caught a tourist carving his name into a pillar. The tourist identifies a 32-year-old man visiting from Ireland used a metal point to inscribe his first and last initials into the structure's first floor. Um, Italy damaging a historical or artistic landmark is a crime that can result in up to one year in prison or a minimum fine of $2,400. Um, private security at Rome's Coliseum on Monday caught the tourist carving his first and last initials into the pillar of the 2,000-year-old structure. He can't have been the first one to do that. Um, the tourist, whose name has not been released, used a metal point to carve his initials about two inches high into a pillar. Um, Italy damaging the landmark is a crime. Why the... Of all the... Fu we can't take you anywhere. No. <laughs> it's... <laughs> really just save it for the bathroom stall man i mean maybe let's let's let's, let's let, try to think big brain here maybe this dude is trying to get vengeance for his ancestors that's what i was gonna that i mean i didn't want to say it because <laughs> i don't yell that by youtube but like it's just italy <laughs> romans go home I, I completely understand the value of that architecture I do. That was a joke. Because I'm a fucking Irish kid whose dad actually pronounced it Italian. I'm not racist against Italians. I married one. Like, But it could have been like, fuck you, Romans, making us Catholic, getting rid of our ancient religion. Fuck all y'all. People called Romans, they go to the house. <laughs> Sorry. Or they could have just it's been an idiot. Brian. Never mind. I just, just fuck's sake. I, I shudder to think that. Like, do you think you're going to be able to find it if you go back? <laughs> do you think you're going to go back and, like, try to impress somebody and be like, yo, I carved my initials in there and not be walking around for four hours unable to find it? You have not immortalized yourself. This Although, is a... ancient Rome was covered in absolutely filthy graffiti. True, that is true. There were so dicks everywhere. Yeah, it's true. Like, there used to just be dicks on every wall in mm -hmm. ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. Still, so I'm... maybe he was just honoring the culture. This is the guy. Still, this is the guy that at every single family gathering, something happens. This is that we can't take you anywhere. He like vomits in the centerpiece at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, do they have things? I don't think they have a Thanksgiving in Ireland, do they? No, that's true. What are, and I should know that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> My cousin's going to watch this on YouTube this next week and like immediately DM me on Twitter and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I know. Sorry. <sighs> Oh, all right. Well, th this this is another recurring thing. And um, I want to stress again, we normally don't do stories about people hurting other people because that's not cool. And we normally sometimes I don't even cover stories where people hurt themselves. However, I do make a very special uh, exception because this is one of those people who th this is, they hurt. They could they hurt themselves and they could potentially have hurt someone else. Yet again, Shopper flaunting his gun in checkout line shoots himself in the groin. A man showing off his gun to a friend accidentally shot himself in the groin and leg. Lincoln City Police say in a Monday news release that Nicholas Ellingford, 29-year-old from Lincoln City, Oregon, shot himself Sunday at a supermarket. Investigation revealed Ellingford was inside the store as he was waiting in the checkout line. He unholstered a Glock 9mm semi-automatic pistol from his waistband so he could show it off to a friend. Ellingford reportedly was holding the gun near the front of his pants 
when he accidentally pulled the trigger. The bullet entered Ellingford's groin area before exiting out the lower thigh of his leg, narrowly missing his femoral artery. No one else was injured in the incident, which is fucking lucky. That should cost you your license to carry a gun, shouldn't it? Because clearly you're not responsible enough. Fucking Second Amendment, man. If you can't get through paying for your shit at the Safeway, they'll be like, hey, look at my girl. I mean, I I can I can understand being that way with toys. See, but I, that's people think guns are toys. Right. I'm that way with my guitars. I'm that way with my computer shit. As far as I'm concerned, those are just, you know, they might have some utility, but they're just trumped up toys. Not guns. It's a lot harder to kill somebody with them. With a guitar? I don't know. Yeah, but you could do it, but not in like five seconds. That's, that is, that, 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 that pine one, that's about a good, that, that piece of wood, that's about five pounds of pine wood. I crack somebody in the skull with that. They ain't getting back up. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's hard. <laughs> I was worried you were going to go, you've thought about this. Um, that doesn't even face me anymore because if I, I mean, I'm married to Dan. Yeah. Who every time we enter a public place is working on how he can kill everybody if he needs to. He's just doing the John Wick calculations. Yeah. Like, he's on a swivel, like, how many people do I have to kill before we're at an exit? Just in case they all turn into zombies right now. Uh, but just, it's, we fucking treat them like toys. It's and, not a toy. Well, n now I you're going to have problems. You shot yourself I, quite possibly in the dick. That That's that's a dick shot. You did it to yourself. And I'm not. I hope that gun really makes you feel like a man. I, I don't want i mean it's it's bad enough that he did this shit thank god no one else is hurt. that's why i get kind of mad at these guys yeah because the, and even if you, even if you do it at home these days if you're home you live in an apartment complex a nine millimeter is going right through fucking drywall like nothing you just go right to your neighbor's house don't even you're you could take someone out like that you're in a fucking also, supermarket like, why is your finger on the trigger anyway right where's the safety what the fuck were you doing? I have handled a gun once in my life because Dan handed it to me to show me the gun he owns. And I held it like this. Mm. Fair and enough. I know that you don't put your finger on the trigger unless you're planning to fucking kill something. <sighs> and I held that shit with two fingers by the very, very edge of the handle. Like it was covered in bees. Man. People over here, uh, people people who are not in America, I'm, I'm sure they watch these stories and like, really? Y'all just walk around all day shooting yourself in the nuts? Yeah, kind of. Literally and metaphorically, yes. Yeah. That's pretty much what we do over here. That's what... Well, <sighs> Fine and fall. All right, finally this week... It's it's very rare we get one of these stories when I can say with absolute certainty that someone's going to hell. Very rare. But with this story, I can say with absolute certainty, dude is going to hell. Man breaks into town and country church, sets it on fire. Hillbro County, Florida. Wait, do they have... Do people worship that magazine? <laughs> no, that's a, that's a, actually a, a the name of a, a place in Florida. Really? Hillsborough County, Florida. Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office is searching for a man who was caught on camera breaking into a church and lighting several pews on fire. Sheriff's Office say the man broke into Incarnation Catholic Church in town and country Friday. Uh, carrying a large bottle. Video surveillance shows him pouring flammable liquid onto three wooden pews before setting them on fire. Uh, approximately 10.39, the man escaped through the east entrance. Sheriff's office say he didn't steal anything. So this dude just broke into the church to set it on fire. I mean, as 
as a as a lapsed Catholic on the internet, I am well aware that there's a lot of people with a lot of strong feelings about the Catholic Church, and they like to tell them to me. And when I tell them that a lot of those reasons are why I'm a lapsed Catholic, they just keep yelling at me. So the animus against the Catholic Church is strong, and there are some good reasons for it. But this is really not going to help. And they caught him on video, so they're looking for they're looking for his ass. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. Didn't steal anything; just came in to light the pews on fire. And that's the thing. Like, if you just want to fuck over your local local Catholic church, there's a ton of shit made of gold in there. <laughs> right. I should not have said that. <laughs> I can feel my mother judging me. From <laughs> Uh, well, do you know what I've started to worry about? Mm-hmm. Except for one, all of my nieces and nephews or teenagers are above now. Yeah. They can find the show anytime they want. They can. With about, about <laughs> with about 10 years of archives. Like, they used to be small enough that I didn't have to worry about it. Yep. So, if you're watching this, anybody, Aunt Tara did not mean that. <laughs> And please don't tell your mom I say. I mean, the the only way I could think of this is like if if somebody else pissed you off and already gone to hell and you're trying to get there to kick their ass. That's it. That's my that's the only explanation. You you want a quick way to hell. Is this your way of preemptively objecting to your ex's wedding next week? It's, why? It, it, I mean, you had to pay money for the, for the gasoline or whatever the fuck you used. Yeah. This is. Was this like a bad breakup with God? <laughs> you well, know? Like I said, being a lapsed Catholic on the internet, <laughs> a lot of people have those, and they're not over him. <laughs> this is like setting your ex's shit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't see how this was going to be productive for anybody. I don't get it. This is I. If you have issues with the Catholic Church, I do not blame you. But put that energy into something better. So many stories on this show are just like we're missing chapters. Yeah, that would make sense out. Most of, of the ones where somebody's naked, we're missing a big chunk of the story. I mean, there are some people who spend their lives doing stuff like they're trying to figure out where the Titanic went down. They figure out what happened to America, Amelia Earhart, the Amelia Triangle. We're sitting here trying to figure out why motherfuckers in Florida are setting churches on fire. Byzantine Orthodoxy for life heretics. <laughs> That's true. They could just be an evangelical. Because uh, evangelicals think Catholics are heretics. So, you know. It's true. Yeah. Maybe they think Jesus wanted them to do that. They also think Jesus wants them to vote Trump, though, so yeah. fuck evangelicals. Yeah. I guess I guess the first thing we learned this the week... one evangelical that watches this show is going to find me, because I said that. <laughs> the first thing we learned on this show this week is that um, not only does God work in mysterious ways, people setting churches on fire work in mysterious ways. Um, Free pews, too, is... Is that an affront to the Trinity? Could it be Satan? <laughs> We've learned that uh, we have a real problem in this country with bullets. They go everywhere because people don't know what the fuck they're doing with them. Yeah. <clears throat> At any you know what? That's fine. You can have all the guns you want. You can't have any bullets. Hmm. I think that's a good compromise. You want 16 AR-15s, you can have them. There is nothing. Oh, you can shoot marshmallows out of them, though. There is nothing in the Second Amendment that says anything about ammunition. It doesn't say fuck all about I think we solved it. Mm. Um, Constitution says shit about bullets. There, we, We've learned there are some people you simply can't take anywhere, particularly 2,000-year-old structures. I did have a friend in college who went on a trip to Rome and put all the busts in headlocks and took pictures. Maybe, no, Greece. And we were like, really? You had to be that American? 
we've learned that um, there are cops who have done way worse shit than you who are deciding if you broke the law. And for stupider reasons. Um, we've learned that <laughs> there, there are easier ways to get out of your homework than a bomb threat. Just learn how to bullshit, man. Fucking ask for an extension, you shithead. It's the American way. Make up a, an aunt. Tell her, tell the, your professor she died. Ask for an extension. It's not a felony. Not a felony. Um, and finally, we've learned this week that um, informing the police you need to poop is not going to be... You don't get a, get a pass for that. Nope. That's not like no a timeout. Pooping card. <laughs> it, it's it's so much of the stuff reminds me when we were kids and we were running around with each other and something happened and we'd be like time out time out time out and everyone yeah. would respect the time out that's it not was a like, function of real life it's not you are not zach morris and this doesn't stop time we we were it was sacrosanct we all agreed to it that time if somebody base. if somebody called time out we, we, we all were like, and somebody tried to do something where everyone else, the entire group, would no, no, he called time out. You can't do yeah, it. Yeah, what the hell, man? We all, it was, man, why, why did, why didn't time out come with us into adulthood? That could have been so useful. I also just want to point out, in case you're wondering what level of lightweight Tara is, mm -hmm. I brought a white claw with me tonight because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm a white girl. <laughs> Over the course of the show, I've drunk about this much of it. And I'm a little fuzzy. And yet, shit still doesn't make any sense. No, I thought it might help, but it didn't. 